So there has been some stories floating around in the past couple of days that Warner Brothers Discovery is reportedly unsatisfied with the J.J. Abrams deal. For those of you who forgot, Abrams and his bad robot productions signed an exclusive $250 million five-year deal with Warner Media back in 2019. Considering J.J. Abrams since signing that deal has failed to produce anything that makes him worthy of $250 million, but once again, as always with WB, they did this to themselves. This is what happens when you foolishly invest in a knockoff Steven Spielberg who's nowhere near as talented. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. You know, it seems like every other week now, Warner Brothers Discovery is finding new ways to showcase their incompetence. They remind me of that friend that we all have who knows that they are in the wrong, but they double down anyway because their ego won't allow them to admit that they've made some terrible decisions. What exactly had J.J. Abrams done prior to this deal that made WB executives think he is worthy of this type of investment? Is he a recognizable name? Sure. But his name does not carry weight. It does not command the attention of audiences in the way that some people think it does. Let's put it this way. When J.J. Abrams signed this deal, he was fresh off of completing the finale of Failure and completely destroying the Star Wars brand with the rise of Skywalker. Yeah, that's who I want to place my faith in. In the guy who had a hand in ruining what was once the most profitable and beloved film franchise. That is why you fail. When people say it feels like WB is going out of their way to make these mind-numbingly bad decisions, this is the type of thing that they are talking about. Correct me if I'm wrong, but WB is currently experiencing a significant amount of financial difficulty, mostly due to the series of box office flops that they had just last year. You see, they can only ride that Barbie wave for so long because the rest of their content has produced next to nothing as it pertains to profitability. I bet they wish they still had that $250 million that they basically threw out the window. You paid a guy to produce content for you and he's basically sat back for four years and collected a paycheck. Had you done your homework and not desperately tried to attach yourself to a somewhat recognizable name, you might have realized that J.J. Abrams is the type of one-trick pony creative who is not going to be able to rescue you from the situation that you put yourself in. Then why the f*** didn't you say so? Almost every single thing that J.J. Abrams has been a part of that was remotely successful had other talented people involved and he was not the driving force of that success. So then came the question after he signed this undeserving deal, what kind of projects would he be working on? People were speculating whether or not J.J. Abrams would dip his toes into the DC pool, and it didn't take long for us to get an answer. Because development began in 2021 on a new Superman movie produced by J.J. Abrams. And not a Superman movie with Clark Kent as the focal point. No, that would be too easy. They decided they wanted a new Superman for modern audiences to connect with. Something very familiar about all this. As usual, they completely disregarded how timeless a character like Superman actually is, because let's be honest, they don't really care about that. The real goal of this proposed Elseworld Superman story was to secure some of those highly sought after cultural brownie points. And my guess is this was WB's way of establishing a new Superman that they would have more of a claim to. Hollywood does this type of thing all the time. They want to establish new versions of these characters so they don't have to pay the original creators what they are due. I mean, Disney Marvel has been making a career out of doing just that, especially lately. And we all know that WB B and DC want to be Disney Marvel, so why not follow in their footsteps? And on top of that, we'll get J.J. Abrams, of all people, to oversee the project. Great, so we'll get a Superman movie without Clark Kent that is filled with mystery boxes and lens flares. That's exactly what the fans wanted. No, don't like that. Speaking of not knowing what the fans want, the new head of DC on film, James Gunn, was recently asked about the status of this project 
because we hadn't got an update on it since May of last year. And James Gunn being as obsessively online as he is, confirmed that this Elseworlds tale is still in development. Now there's a lot to unpack here, but first of all, if WB is in fact a little unsatisfied with the J.J. Abrams deal, then why exactly are they moving forward with his Superman movie? I guess you could make the argument that they want to try to squeeze something out of this deal, because they've basically gotten nothing in return for their investment. The problem with that logic, as always, is this is quite literally a Superman movie that absolutely nobody asked for. When you are in such a dire state as DC is, do you really want to place all of your eggs in the basket of an unproven concept? James Gunn's Superman has Clark Kent in it, and I'm not even 100% sure that there is interest in that. Whatever it is that you're offering, we're not into it. Don't care. Couldn't care less. Producing a movie that is based on a made-up version of the character that nobody knows is a risky proposition, especially if you consider that DC's reputation is in the toilet right now. I also find it interesting that James Gunn and company would rather double down on this Superman movie than give fans the Superman movie we all want in Man of Steel 2. If we are going to fully embrace the concept of Elseworlds Tales, with the new DCU, then why not invest in that one? Do you really think that audiences will be confused by the existence of two Clark Kent Supermans? Over the past three years, we've had three cinematic Batmans show up in films. I think the real reason that they won't commit to a Elseworlds Henry Cavill Superman movie is they probably feel like Man of Steel 2 would outshine Superman Legacy, and they are probably right and that shows you pretty much the confidence they have in Legacy to begin with. That's right, it sticks! The one positive thing I said could come out of all of this multiverse bullshit is that it creates an opportunity for us to have multiple versions of the same character exist at the same time. And No Way Home was the only movie to really explore that concept directly. But in my opinion, no one has been able to properly utilize the multiverse concept in the way that it should have been utilized. It is now a wasted opportunity because we are at a point where audiences have already grown tired of it. But sure, an unproven Superman concept is still worth pursuing, right? This is why I say that James Gunn needs to stop talking and go do whatever it is that he is going to do. Because every single time he opens his mouth, he either contradicts himself or the studio and makes the entire future of his DCU that much more convoluted. Nobody really understands what's going on, what's canon and what's not, what characters are coming back and which aren't. The DCU hasn't even started yet and everything already sounds like a mess. I don't get it. This is why if you were going to do a reboot, a full reboot was probably necessary. You can't pick and choose the projects and characters that you would like to move on with. And it's certainly not a good idea to pursue and produce movies that people clearly have no interest in. I understand embracing multiverse films with people like Todd Phillips and Matt Reeves at the helm, because both are proven commodities when it comes to quality filmmaking. But embracing a Elseworlds tale with J.J. Abrams at the helm, that's the type of thing that will secure you yet another financial disaster that at this point you can't afford to have. Y'all be cool. Right on.